I expect these episodes to be pretty bad at this point, and this one was. But it was mostly just boring. Uh, I think that's the worst thing about it is that it's just it's just a filler episode. It, this is episode eight of a ten episode season. So shouldn't we be starting to see some more suspense building? I mean, maybe it would have been better if the previous seven episodes had done a better job laying the foundation. I don't know. Either way, it's all just nonsense. And like I said, it felt like another filler episode, which seems pretty inexcusable with only two episodes left. It starts with Picard and Guinan being interrogated by this fucking dollar store agent Mulder. And I know that this this is going to sound petty, but I'm so glad that all the fan theories surrounding this guy turned out to be wrong. Everyone thought he would be the same guy from the Relativity on Voyager because it's the same actor. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So there's some more subverted expectations that everyone pretends to enjoy. Pretty sure this is the only reason they hired this actor for this is so that fans would, you know, it would send fans down another rabbit hole. They love watching you chase your own tail over this shit. <laughs> anyway, this dude is convinced that Picard and Guinan are aliens, which he is right. I mean, Guinan isn't human. And Picard is a human living in a robot replica of a frail old man. And somehow, this knockoff Mulder is the only person at the FBI who seems to know what's going on here. There's no other, no one else involved. There's no dollar store Scully. <laughs> I guess they thought that would be a little too obvious. But, you know, he works in a basement. He seems to be an outcast of some kind. He's, he's Mulder. <laughs> and he doesn't even have any cameras filming these interrogations. So I don't know what is supposed to be accomplished here. It's awfully convenient that the, there's no one else is going to see what takes place except for this guy. <laughs> and after the opening credits, we see Seven and Rafi looking for Girati, who is apparently running around as the new Borg Queen. And Rafi pretty much writes off Girati. Um, she seems to think there's no hope of rescuing her and that she's just kind of a lost cause. Which is just typical, awful Rafi, isn't it? I mean, she refuses to let Elnor go. But she's just like, eh, Girati's fucked, I guess. I guess she didn't have the same off-screen connection with Girati that she had with Elnor. <laughs> and Seven is a fucking hypocrite. People are so easy when they trust you. I knew exactly what to say to that guy. It's like his face was a map. No wonder I'm president. Oh, you manipulate. Everyone has to be exactly where Rafi wants him to. You think we don't see it, but we all do. So she basically brags about manipulating someone and then in the same breath accuses Rafi of manipulating people. All of these people are awful. I mean, she, she is right to accuse Rafi of that. She does manipulate people. She's judgmental. She's kind of a mean-spirited character in a lot of ways. I, I mean, I'm still shocked at some of the things she said to Picard earlier in this season. I mean, it was just it was just insane. Rafi has very few redeeming qualities. I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> but at the same time, Seven shouldn't be, you know, saying Rafi manipulates people when she does the same thing. Granted, they have a mission to complete, and it's necessary in some cases, but... Is it necessary for her to brag about it and joke about it and take such pleasure in it? And then to say, no wonder I'm president? <laughs> As though politicians are still known for being manipulative in the 24th, in her 24th century? Again, cynical Star Trek. This is what this is. Uh, you know, it's just, just awful people in an awful world. <laughs> oh, and Rafi assumes that Seven should know what Girati's next move is simply because Seven used to be a Borg. Again, awful people. 
and they come across Gerardi, who is eating the batteries out of cars. Yeah, she's she's consuming car parts. I mean, do I even have to address how stupid that is? The Borg assimilate people and technology. And Borg drones need to regenerate at some point, and I assume that the Queen has to do something similar. But what is she getting out of eating batteries? What does that do? How the fuck would it not just kill Gerardi? She's still a human. She is 99% organic still. What? What does chowing down on some Duralasts do? <laughs> it's brain dead. And then she attacks Rafi and Seven. She kicks the shit out of them. But she spares their lives and walks away slowly. And neither Seven or Rafi bother to follow her or pick up the phaser they dropped to shoot her. Which they could do, like I said, she's walking away very slowly. And I guess Gerardi is able to resist the Borg Queen. A little bit, at least. So she is just able to do what no one else has really ever been able to do, with the possible exception of Data. But who knows? Maybe it's because the Queen hasn't eaten enough batteries yet. I don't know. Maybe she's not strong enough. She needs a, you know, she needs another Duralast, I guess. And back at Adam Sung's house, Adam's daughter, Corey, is confronted by Q, who appears in her fucking VR headset. And he says he's a program, yet he is interacting with the environment around him. So what the fuck is happening here? He's lifting things, he's moving them around, but he's in her headset? I don't know. And he tells her that Adam Sung created her in a lab. And he gives her the cure for her sunlight allergy. And then she confronts Adam Sung, and they have a very shitty conversation, and Adam... Adam says, reality is a construct. I don't remember what he said after that, because that just blew me away. Reality is a construct. I mean, that, that sounds like the complete opposite of what reality is, no? Okay, whatever. And Corey leaves. First time out in the real world, she's never left the house. She has no money, no concept of how things work, and no shoes. But hey... She's going. And who could blame her? Because Adam Sung is an asshole. And it turns out that Dollar Store Fox Mulder is the one that found Rios's comm badge. So hey, they actually addressed it. But of course, that still doesn't explain why none of the crew bothered to look for it in the first place. None of them wondered what happened to it. Because they're all idiots. They claim to care about preserving the timeline, but they don't. Their actions do not reflect that. <laughs> and by the way there's still a missing comm badge out there because when Picard was arrested by this dude he just threw his comm badge on the ground like it was a bag of weed somehow that seems to have gone totally unnoticed by this otherwise observant X-Files douchebag and when Rios was in the ICE detention center he explained the complete nature of his mission to one of the guards and Dildo Fox Mulder has a complete transcript of what he said. So once again, Rios is just sabotaging this mission every step of the way. <laughs> uh, he gave everything away for the sake of a joke. He obviously thought no one would take it seriously. That, and that saying out, it out loud wouldn't actually matter because no one would believe it. But he, you know, he's a Starfleet captain. You'd think that he would have at least some slight concern that someone might take it seriously and cause more problems for him. But he does not. But he does get a kiss from Dr. Ramirez. So it looks like his self-serving little, little side mission is done. He is locked in his Mass Effect romance. And maybe now he can get back to the main quest line. Although that might be difficult because in the next scene... It shows him saying the transporters aren't working. Even though 
in the last episode, he broke the timeline when he used the transporter to beam himself and Ramirez and her kid to the ship. So, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Suddenly they don't work. Awfully inconvenient. Anyway, Q finally meets Guinan. And he describes the summoning that she attempted to do in the last episode as a sacred ritual. So the Q believe in sacred rituals. Basically, the Q are genies. You rub the lamp, and one of them shows up, and you get three go fuck yourselves. That's basically what, uh, what they're establishing here, as far as I can tell. And it's revealed that Q is dying. Big shock. Still doesn't explain why he's doing this, though. And it still doesn't explain how he is able to accomplish what he's doing with such limited powers. I mean, he's just posing as an FBI agent here with no explanation. I just I don't get it. <laughs> ah, what else? Um, oh, it's revealed that Rafi manipulated Elnor into joining Starfleet, so there's that. Uh, once again, Rafi doesn't have many redeeming qualities at all. I suppose it's nice that she actually feels guilty about doing these toxic things, but only when she's called out on it. <laughs> only when se someone says she's full of shit does she actually reflect on the things she says and does. <sighs> anyway, Dollar Store Mulder reveals that uh, he had an experience with aliens when he was a kid. He met some Vulcans. And I don't know what Vulcans were doing on Earth at this time. Uh, is this a reference to the Carbon Creek episode of Enterprise? Because if it is, the timeline doesn't match up. This dude isn't old enough to be there for that. So I, I don't understand how that works. And one of the Vulcans tries to mind meld with him. What the fuck? Mind melding is not something Vulcans do typically on a whim, especially not at this time. It was outlawed by Vulcans at a certain point in their history. And this, it was still outlawed at this point. So why the fuck would a Vulcan walk up to a random child and mind meld with him? It's like the writer said, okay, we got some Vulcans in this scene. Uh, oh shit. Uh, what do Vulcans do again? Um, they do the neck pinch thing. Uh, oh, mind melts. They do mind melts. Let's have him mind meld with this kid. So fucking stupid. <laughs> anyway, they convince uh, Dollar Store Fox Mulder to let them go. So I have no idea what the point of them being arrested was. Uh, what? What was the point of all this? Uh, it's like they just wanted to do a shitty X-Files subplot, and that's it. And the episode ends with Adam Sung meeting Jurati, or the Jurati Borg Queen, I should say, and agreeing to help her. And he does this because apparently Rene Picard will make a discovery on the Europa mission that will render Adam's work obsolete, and I have no clue what that could possibly be. What could possibly render his genetic experiments obsolete I have no idea and if she fails this mission he will become a legendary figure and it will lead to the dystopian future we saw in the second episode I have no idea what's going on honest honestly what what's the Borg Queen's motivation here what is she trying to accomplish because remember if Adam Sung has his way and he becomes a legendary figure, uh, and you know he's he's worshipped in the future. The Borg Queen's future is fucked if that happens. The Borg are defeated. So, why are these two characters working together? Now, she does assimilate a group of people. So, I guess she is making her own timeline. But I don't know, man. I it seems like she wouldn't want to start the Borg over from scratch. <laughs> I mean. If she if she could have her way, you'd think that she would want the Borg as they were before this. It just it just sucks. I don't know what to tell you. 
if and if if you're someone who claims to know exactly what's going on in this show, I don't believe you. It is a convoluted mess. Um, if you're enjoying it, that's one thing, but it is all over the place. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Two episodes left. Let's get through it. I think the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm reviewing it on this channel. So I would have stopped a long time ago. <laughs> I guarantee you. But for the sake of being a completionist, I feel like I have to finish the season and see what happens. So until next time, take it easy.